Hi guys. I want to talk to you today about building your prepper, your prepper pantry. <laughs> I can say it. Um, and some easy ways to build it up and build it up quickly. Um, instead of putting food out all on the table that I have here um, or showing you my pantry, I wanted to just sit down and talk real quick about some things that you can do to build your pantry and make a, a grocery list that and you know that you have what you need for that week or that two weeks or a month however often you go shopping and you make out your menus if you do I used to make out menus um, I don't really anymore where it's the two of us we just fly by whatever we feel like um, and sometimes I get lost and I'm like Ugh, you know what are we gonna make today uh, so I should really do a menu because then it gives me an idea of what I need but we usually eat the same things most of the time once in a while I'll try something different uh, but luckily the stores are open and I'm able to buy things right now so um, it doesn't take too much to go ahead and do that but with that said if something were to happen uh, and I couldn't get to the store would I have enough food um, to feed us for a while whatever it may be we live in the northeast we have snowstorms and we sometimes we have big snowstorms um, and so I try to make sure that I have extra on hand of whatever we may need or want for a few days at least so that we can um, we can live and not worry about going to the grocery store and make that a, a priority we can make other things a priority by plowing and shoveling and and staying warm keeping that wood stove uh, going so the first thing I want to talk about was going through your uh, pantry and your pantry you're gonna see you're gonna see rainbows every once in a while on me because uh, I have one in the window and it's right there um, you know uh, go through your pantry and your pantry isn't just your closet where you keep your food it's your cupboards your refrigerator your freezer your pantry is where you keep all of your items um, so you want to go through uh, each cupboard that you have food in go through your food find the expired food find the food that is stale uh, stuff that you're not going to want or you are you never eat you know you bought it for the kids and they're like eh. You know if it's something that is that you think nobody will eat in the house pitch it give it away if it's good enough to give away um, just get rid of it and get keep that space for stuff that you will eat that's the main goal is that you want to get things for your pantry that you and your family will eat we all know that kids are picky they all they may want to just eat spaghetti or um, spaghettios uh, or mac and cheese buy those things for your kids if something were to happen um, and you wanted them to eat and you made them scrambled eggs I'm just trying to think of something easy uh, and they don't eat scrambled eggs and you sat them down and said okay here's your meal they probably won't eat those scrambled eggs and you're gonna be trying to get them to eat if you just buy stuff that they like um, SpaghettiOs, mac and cheese, they're more apt to sit down and eat what you have because that's what they normally eat. Um, buy things that you and your family will eat. That's the most important. Um, but go through your pantry, get rid of things that you won't eat uh, or that don't store well, and take stuff that, um, that you will keep and organize your pantry put your canned goods you know your vegetables whatnot in one area so that you can keep track of how many you have if it's too much for that one cupboard to put all your vegetables in your canned vegetables get a Rubbermaid tote with a lid and put the extra in there go by expiration dates you want the expiration dates in your cupboards where you're going to use them first the older expiration dates um, or ones that are going to expire soon you want to use up quicker so put the other ones in and just rotate that food out so as you use a can grab one out of your tote and put it into the back of your 
your row of cans or however you store them. And then as you use them out, you know that you can replace. Um, I do something called copy canning. I don't really call it that. Um, it's, it's basically you go and you buy, um, if you need a can of beans, you go buy two cans of beans. And then the next week when you go shopping, even though you only used one can, you still go and instead of just replacing that can, you buy two more cans of beans. And that way, the extra cans can either go in the back of your pantry or in your bucket or wherever you keep your extra food. And you will have, you'll be slowly building up your pantry. Um, I do that with spaghetti, spaghetti sauces. At least once a week we have spaghetti. Um, and we use a can of the little jar of sauce and a half a, it's just the two of us, so like a half a box of spaghetti. But even though I only use a half a box and I have another half left for the next week, if we decide to have spaghetti again, I still buy another whole box at the end of the week. Uh, sometimes if I have extra money, they're only a dollar if you buy the store brand here right now. Um, I buy two boxes. It all depends on how much I have. And then when you go to buy your sauce, same thing. I buy a dollar fifty jar of sauce. Sometimes I can buy two, and you just build up your pantry that way. You wouldn't think it would build up very quickly, but to know that you have an extra box of spaghetti and an extra box of sauce, if something were to happen and you couldn't get to the store for a day or two, it's good to know you have that. The whole thing going through my head thinking about doing this video is peace of mind. You have peace of mind that you have a little extra food stored away uh, or some extra bottles of water or whatever you like to drink. Um, some extra spices if you like to cook with and add some flavor to your food, especially if you get down to the a week of being stuck in your house and you don't have much food left but you have rice. You have a can of beans and you mix those together maybe it would be good to have a little bit of some kind of a spice Italian spice garlic salt I don't know whatever you you know and sprinkle that on flavor in your food really makes a difference and uplifts your spirit speaking of that the other thing that I thought would be a good thing to get is some hard candies when we were going into lockdown last spring for the first time we went shopping and I said I don't want a bag of chocolate in the house. I don't want a bunch of candy in the house. But it would be nice once in a while to have just a hard candy to pop in your mouth, something sweet once in a while to uplift you, to, you know, just, just to know that you have that in the cupboard and you're feeling, ugh, not another day of this. It, it may lift your spirits. It may lift a little kid's spirit, you know, to know that you have a little bit of sugar there and who knows? I don't know. It was just a thought. And it did help. You know, if you just get stressed out, for me, I don't know. It helps. <laughs> so when you're making your, when you're putting things back into your pantry um, and you're making your, your grocery list, write down what you think you're going to need for, say you shop once a week, for that week's groceries. I just realized as I was talking, I didn't have my microphone uh, up here where you could hear it. It was down, down on the floor, so hopefully you could hear me okay. It's a pretty good microphone, so. Um, so where was I? The menu. As you're making your menus and writing out your grocery list, which I think should be side by side as you're doing it, and you do it in front of your pantry. Do it where uh, you can look at it and go, okay, I'm gonna need spaghetti sauce, and you look in your pantry and say, well, how many jars of spaghetti sauce do I have? How many am I gonna need? Think about if you're gonna be making uh, something with multiple ingredients, what you're gonna need for that particular recipe. Um, uh, let's take cheeseburger pie with that made with Bisquick. Sometimes I make that. And so you're gonna need burger. You need, um, what else do you need? Milk eggs, and you need the Bisquick, make sure you have all that. And when you have Bisquick, make sure you have enough Bisquick to make that particular um, recipe. And if you're running out and there's just enough to do that one recipe, 
If you can, you go buy another box of Bisquick. Buy the store brand if you have to. I've done that. Tastes exactly the same, works exactly the same to me anyway. Everybody's different. Uh, you know you're going to need burger. You buy a pound of burger for that particular one. Maybe if you have a little extra, buy another pound of burger. You'll have all the ingredients to make it again the next week if you buy two if you can. Not You don't have to do two of everything, but... Um, you know, two cans of beans, if you're going to use one that week, uh, if you're going to use four, buy an extra can, buy four extra cans, whatever you have. I needed beans and corn a few weeks ago. I noticed I was getting low on both. My garden, I did not grow any beans this year, so I didn't can any. Um, and I made the mistake of thinking I had some and I didn't have enough. Uh, that I, that I was comfortable with. It grew corn, but it didn't grow very well. So I didn't have much of that on hand. Um, so I went and bought the store brand, which was 50 cents a can. I bought a flat, which a flat is 12 cans. And so it cost me $6. I bought corn one week, beans the next week. I have 12 cans of corn and beans for the two of us. That's gonna last quite a while, uh, especially we don't have vegetables every day as far as canned vegetables. So that's gonna last us quite a while. And I'm not gonna stop though. I may go again next week and buy a couple more cans, not maybe a whole flat, but a couple more cans, whatever I can afford if I have a little extra. Plan accordingly. But as you're writing out your list, check what you have in your pantry, see what you need and buy a little bit extra every time. I like to think about if I can't buy it, say a loaf of bread, do I have the stuff to make that loaf of bread? And that's part of looking into your pantry and seeing what you have. You need some flour, your baking soda, baking powder, sugar, you know, your staples, they call it. Let's see what you have of that. Maybe buy a little extra. Uh, start your pantry if you haven't, if you're stuck and need a little help, uh, reach out reach out to any of these channels that are talking about pantry. They've been doing it, you know, building your pantry. Um, they've been doing it for years, most of them. They have tips and tricks that are great. Uh, if you have a question, leave it in the comments. I would be glad to try and help you answer those. And um, I think that's gonna be it for this video. You know, go through all your stuff ex that's expired and uh, stale, get rid of it and buy only products that you and your family will eat uh, and that you can use um, and organize your pantries so that you know where everything is set everything up have a separate area for your overstock if you have a place to put that just a just a Rubbermaid tub will work um, and have access to your to your items so that you can find out what you have and what you need and you can rotate your stock out as needed. Um, and I hope this helps a little bit. I hope I wasn't all over the place and, and ramble on too much. And thank you, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Uh, if you have already subscribed, uh, if you haven't hit the bell, hit the bell. We always upload videos a couple a week. There may be something there that you like. And like this video if you like it. Have a good day guys and good luck with building up your pantries. Get started. That's the first step really. Get started. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.